guys how are you doing welcome back to my channel so in this video i'm going to show you how to use the maplex label engine to manipulate the appearance of your labels when creating a map so first when you uh, you right click on the map you and you go to the data frame properties um under the the general tab you can choose whether to use the standard label engine or the maplex label engine the maplex has more and cool features in how you can manipulate the appearance of your label so if you want to do really great work with your labels that's what you need to do also you can right click over up there and you tick the labeling that way the toolbar appears so under the drop down you can click that to enable it also you have the abbreviation dictionaries and the key numbering which helps you create the key numbering uh, groups so we also have that options and here you can decide on the color for the unplaced labels and also the orientation of the vertical labels and decide if you want to allow labels to overlap next is the label manager here uh, under the label classes you decide which class is the one that you want to manipulate its label so in this case it's the contours and then you indicate the label field and there you can manipulate the text symbols the font and the size and the color so like we can put 11 and when you click on symbol you can edit symbols stuff like that and here under placement properties uh, we have you can have regular street street address contour or river placements and so in this map you can see i'm using contours so we are going to choose contour placement and under properties you can decide to remove duplicate labels which is always the best so that they are not crowded and you can also decide if you want one label per feature and the label position uh, when you go to options it shows you the label alignment and what we have now is the page alignment which you can see while the uphill alignment it shows the labels in a way it can tell you if it's the, it's in the uphill area or the lower side so the ones on the lower inverted as you can see and for the laddering right now we we've placed the labels in laddering that's why it's organized that way and when you remove it that's how it changes to there you can decide on the feature weight of the labels and if you want the background labels so for the scale range you decide if you want to maybe you don't want the, sh the labels to be shown when some scale has been reached you can indicate there so now let's just click on apply and see how the labels appear for what we've specified so far so that's how they look these are the contour labels and these contours were at interval of 25 meters so you can be able to see that from the labels and we can do some little bit of changes to these labels and so some of the things that we can do here are the things that we can do using the standard label engine so first if i want to use expression you click on that expression and what i want to do is instead of having all these labels maybe i want to do these labels uh, only for the contours that have interval of let's say 50 meters or 100 meters so you can write an expression here to to tell this um so that you can be able to only visualize the labels that you want so i'm going to use this code here it's in VB script and you can find it online. Well, most of these codes you can find them online. So it's it's basically uh, telling the computer to find the label that it's at at interval of 50 meters. That that is what I'm intending to do. So I'm going to edit this code so that it can match up with my data. 
So here for the data in brackets, it was initially a data file called elevation. So for me, it's the contour field. So I'm just going to edit it until it's okay and there is no error. So after this, I'll only be able to visualize the labels at intervals of 50 meters. So that means the map will look better and the labels won't be overcrowded, which is something that I think everyone wants. You want a map that when you present it, it's a good map. So you're just going to copy this code. And change it until we obtain the final code that we want. So the function that we're using is the find label, and its argument is the contour. So it's going to only place labels if the interval is at 50 meters. And it's using the if statement. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the if statement. So I'm going to change it to 50 because that's what I want. So if you just search online, if you've dealt with such a problem before this these codes are many online you don't have to struggle trying to figure it out so i think our code is okay now so let's verify so you can see the expression is valid so that's okay just click on OK. And then um, let's apply this and see how the results are going to appear. How is it going to change this label? So you see there's some changes. Now we have less labels in the map and you can see from 600 to 650 the interval here is at 50 meters which is good that is what we wanted so now maybe let's work on the text we go to symbol and then you edit symbol so here um general stuff is just if you want to make it bold and for the formatted text you can use it if you want it in all caps for the advanced text you can put a background color or maybe a fill pattern but what we want to do for today i want to put a halo so you click on that and you click on the symbol choose the outline color so you want something that's attractive something that when someone looks at the map they can read well your symbols your labels okay so i'm just going to try this uh, very short in color almost like pink or purple there so let's try that it might be so shouting but let's just try and see how it's going to look like okay now that's how it is clearly it's a very shouting color probably not even a good color for a map anyway it depends with what you're mapping so i'm just trying to show you how to do that so maybe you can just change the color and make it something else Maybe you can try the red color. Sometimes it's hard to decide on actually which color to use. 
so let's wait for it to load then we see how it yeah i think it's a bit better let's reduce the size a bit so that's what you just keep doing until you obtain the labels that you feel like are okay so that's good and then yeah for the, for the scale range i already shown that so you can also use the sql query that's if you want to select some features from this layer So for example, you can select contours. Um, so when you get the unique values, those are the ones. Maybe you can say you want to select uh, contours that are, let's say greater or equal to 700. Always make sure you verify your code to ensure it is a valid one. Then you click OK. So let's try click applying and see what happens. So it seems nothing has been selected anyway let's just check the attribute table to see it and nothing has been selected anyway let's do something else so you see when i move around the map the labels are loaded every single time so uh, soon we'll know how we can manage that here you can uh, specify the priority ranking so that you can decide which of the labels is going to be drawn first which one has the higher priority also you can specify the weights uh, decide which label has more weight than the other so when you see a map you can be able to identify which label first before the other and So you can see clearly every time I move around the map, the labels have to reload and that's a lot of work because it might, it takes a toll on the computer loading, especially if you're dealing with a lot of data, maybe a map that covers a large area, it's going to take so much of your time. So you can do this, you can lock the labels, that means if, if I move around the map, it doesn't take so much time loading, you can see this, it is now better, so you can always do that. And then you can pause the labeling process if you want to do other analysis, and also you can view the unplaced labels. So you see now when I move, because I've locked the labels, it doesn't take so much time loading. That's the end of this video guys.